All praises are due to Allah, the Creator, the Cherisher, and the Sustainer of this universe, and may His peace and blessings be upon His noble Prophet Muhammad and his companions and descendants and followers. Dear respected brothers and sisters, Jazakumullah khairan for coming. And welcome to the second session of the Tarbiya Nafsiya or Ruhiya, the Spiritual Purification Six Weeks Workshop. Uh, first of all, I would like to ask uh, who made the homework? You remember the homework? Wearing these swimming goggles after blocking them completely using electricity tape so that no light can enter. Who? One, two, huh? Three, well, not many, not many did the homework. Um, how many times did you wear these swimming goggles during the past week? Three times, okay, and you? Three as well. How did it feel? Yeah, what were your feelings when you disabled your seeing sense? Scared? Huh. Depressed? Helpless? Insecure? Okay. Oh, you felt that, you realize that a blind person doesn't even know how his face looks like. Okay. What activities did you do with it? Watch TV? Okay. Well, these are also things blind people do and they listen. Um, you went to the bathroom? Okay. And you, you went to the train's platform? Oh! Of course, with an escort. Okay, alhamdulillah, no accidents happened. Uh, usually trainees who regularly do their homework and are very committed can't do this homework seven days a week. Um, the most, the best of them, they do it for four days, maximum four days. They cannot disable the seeing sense for half an hour, only half an hour, every day, for just one week. See how just we are. We enjoy the seeing sense for years. We do not think about it. Add to this your kidneys and the hundreds of chemical operations that happen in them to purify your body from toxics. The liver, the hearing sense, etc., etc. You remember, I asked you in the past workshop of Tarbiya Imaniya to record the Ni'am, the gifts of Allah. So some of you recorded 20, some 30, some people reached 80. Actually, a young lady in Tripoli, in Tarablus, in Lebanon, listed 385. So I asked her, is swallowing one of them? She said, no. I said, do you know why you forgot it? It is because you do not have a problem with swallowing. People do not feel the gift of Allah, do not realize the gift of Allah, the blessing of Allah, except when they lose it. This is why we have to discipline ourselves by disabling some of them, some of these gifts, temporarily, to feel how helpless we are without Allah. This is what Psalm, actually, this is what fasting is about. You deprive yourself from the lawful blessings of Allah temporarily and feel the need for them and, of course, the need for Him. The most important is to feel that these gifts are not yours, are not personal. You are not sharp-sighted because you are better and more talented than others. No, they are gifts given to you and can be taken from you at any time. This is what it's all about. Uh, now let's start the uh, session number two. Why would anyone show off? Why would any one of us uh, show off? It's because he is spiritually weak. And because of this spiritual weakness, so he is trying to compensate it by showing off. So now we need to talk about spiritual weakness. Spiritual weakness is a disease. And in order to diagnose it, you need to know its symptoms. So number one, you need to know that it's a disease. 
You need to know the symptoms. So if you diagnose that you have this disease, we will talk about treatment, inshallah, later in, a, um, in another session. So, number one, we need to understand that there are two types of spiritual diseases. There are hidden spiritual diseases and apparent spiritual diseases. The apparent diseases are easy to diagnose because they are apparent. The symptoms are easy to realize. When you see someone influenced by desires or not abiding by the commands of Allah or falls regularly into sins or falls into sins, this means that he is suffering from this spiritual disease which is clear, apparent spiritual disease. But there are also hidden spiritual diseases and they are very difficult to diagnose. And the symptoms differ from one person to the other. The symptoms of these um, hidden spiritual diseases are as follows. I will list them all and then we will discuss one by one during the session. But when I list them, I don't want you to judge people. You're not here to judge others. So when I say, for example, speaking frequently about oneself, you shouldn't say, oh yeah, this is exactly my neighbor, or this is exactly my wife, or my parent, or my... No, you are here to discover your own weaknesses. So I want you to think and ponder about every word I say, and try to find it in yourself. Do you speak frequently about yourself? Do you run for positions and compete to win these positions in organizations? Do you find it hard to learn from equals, from people who are equal to you, peers? Do you hate it when others advise you? Do you downgrade others? Do you remind others with the favors that you did for them? Do you frequently daydream? Do you love fame? Are you arrogant? Do you brag people? Do you lie to hide mistakes and avoid blame? We need brothers and sisters to understand that the biggest human desire in the world is to distinguish oneself from others. To be distinguished with wealth, knowledge, beauty, strength, power, intelligence, social class. Uh, for example, saying, my grandfather was a prime minister. Uh, I'm a descendant of the prophet, peace be upon him. I am Hafiz. So to be distinguished from others. And spiritual weakness is being too weak to resist desires. So number one, when I say spiritual weakness, I mean being weak to resist desires or also to claim the credit of capabilities and talents and merits which Allah has given to you. So people claim credit for things like being rich. Well, who gave them the money? It's Allah for being strong. So they claim credit for being strong. But Allah gave them the strength for being knowledgeable. Allah gave them the knowledge and so on. So what I say spiritual, spiritually weak is someone who is unable to resist desires or at the same time, someone claiming credit for things that do not belong to him. You know, like someone who uh, uh, borrows uh, the Porsche uh, of one of his friends, and then he goes and shows off with it. But he, he looks like an idiot because it doesn't, it's not his. He's not the owner of this car. So how come he is showing off with something that doesn't even belong to him? So this is exactly spiritually weak. Um, but there is a difference between spiritual weakness and spiritual defeat. Someone can be spiritually defeated. And this is a frustrated person. 
when several manifestations of spiritual weakness gather, and after a while one realizes that he was living in an illusion, he feels frustrated and loses self-confidence and even loses trust in Allah and in his and in himself. So he loses self-confidence and he loses confidence even in Allah. This is because there are several things that he that, that happened. For example, several manifestations of spiritual weakness. Someone who thought himself the strongest and he thought himself the smartest and he thought himself the richest. And then when he got in touch with others who are more rich than him, uh, more intelligent than him, more strong than him, so he, he realized that he was living all this life in an illusion. And this brings frustration and then he loses self-confidence and he loses also uh, confidence in Allah. The outcome of this workshop is to have a humble, modest Muslim, but not a spiritually defeated and frustrated Muslim. So the difference between a mutawada, a humble person, a modest person, and a, a spiritually defeated person, a frustrated person, is as follows a modest trusts what Allah can do and what he can do by the grace of Allah only so if you're modest if you are mutawada if you're humble it means that you trust Allah trust that Allah can do everything and you trust also that by the grace of Allah you can do a lot but a frustrated person neither trusts what he can do, nor what Allah can do. This is a frustrated person. So uh, the Prophet ﷺ used to discipline his companions like that. So for example, he says, تَغْزُونَ الرُّومِ ثُمَّ يَفْتَحُهُ اللَّهِ You will fight the Romans, and then Allah will open their country for Islam. He doesn't say, you will fight the Romans, and then you will open their country for Islam. No, not you. Allah will open it. You will fight the Romans, Allah will open it. Disciplining them. The Quran says, it is he who makes people laugh and weep. Prophet Ibrahim says, he who gives me food and drink and he who cures me when I'm ill. Allah, Allah do, is doing everything. Allah does everything. Without Allah, we are nothing. If you read the Quran, just focusing on finding yourself, the conclusion will be, without Allah, you are nothing. You are unplugged. You don't have any power. And I told you last time, one of the phrases in the Bible that exists in the hands of the Christians today, that I believe that it is unchanged, this phrase, unchanged, is when Jesus is saying, by my own self, I can do nothing. And this is one of the things that I tell Christians who believe that Jesus is God. I say, is this the tone of a God or a tone of a servant? Servant, abd, saying, without Allah, I can do nothing. I want you to try it and tape a conversation for some people and listen to it do you know what we you will hear every one of them speaking about himself we are ill people believe me we're sick every one of us speaks about himself about his possessions about his talents his capabilities. Believe me, sick people. All of them don't belong to us. Given to us by Allah. So think. Try to remember. Do you speak about yourself a lot? Do you mention your achievements? Do you speak proudly? about your strength or wealth or your forefathers. My grandfather was a prime minister. 
That's why the Arabs they have a uh, poem that says, "ليس الفتى من قال كان أبي إن الفتى من قال ها أنا ذا." The real man is not the one who says, "My father was so and so." The real man is the one who achieves things, who does things to prove that he is a man. Do you speak proudly about these things? Do you tell people, well, leave this for me. I, I do this well. You like to show that. You are, you're the one. Do you fear that people know your weaknesses? So you hide your weaknesses. Do you tend sometimes to criticize your peers, your equals, in order not to look better than you? You don't want them to look better than you, so you keep criticizing your equals. So we are here, and then someone else is mentioned who is like an equal for me, and I start like criticizing him. Yeah, he's good, but he has some issues. I don't even know if someone tells me, what are these issues? I won't be able to answer, but I, I have to criticize him somehow. I have to. Why? Because he will look better than I. These are all diseases. Believe me, brothers, Salah and Saum and all these rituals are to clean us from these diseases. The problem is we are focusing on just doing them perfectly without looking at the goals. The ultimate goal of these rituals is to clean your heart. So, we, And I mentioned last time the uh, passage from Sheikh Hassan al-Banna when he said that we need to excel in both both the physical rituals and the heart's rituals too. Do you tend to speak more than listen when you are with your friends? You tend to speak more than you listen? Do you interrupt others when they talk? To talk. Do you comment on everything said? So if you tape the conversation between you and five or six friends, and you listen to it. Do you find it like that? Friend number one speaks, and then a comment from you. Friend number two, and then a comment for you. Friend number three, and then a comment for you. This means what? If you are really someone who comments on everything like that, this means that, by the way, you have good intentions. You have good intentions. You want to benefit them because you are the most wise. That's how you look at yourself. You are the most wise, and they have to benefit from your knowledge. So you comment every time. I'm telling you, these things can be done but with good intentions. But because you look highly at yourself, you're an example for people. Yes, of course, the Quran said that in the Prophet of Allah, there is the most beautiful example. And you are the second most beautiful example. Do you defend your opinion? So someone is having an opinion and then you give another opinion. And someone criticizes your opinion, you keep defending your opinion, you don't want it to be wrong. You know, Imam Shafi'i said, Ma nadartu ahadan qat illa wa ahbabtu an yadhar al haqq ala lisani. Every time, the Imam Shafi'i says, every time I debate with another scholar or with a scholar, I always want al haqq, the truth, to be on his side. Why? Because he cares about the truth. He only wants the truth. And it's better if it's not in his own opinion. Because if every time he speaks and he wins the debate, it's not good for him spiritually. He will start thinking highly about himself. So every time he enters into a debate, he wishes to lose. But he wants to find the truth at the same time. So he wants the truth to be on the other side. But... The intention is, when he debates, is not to win, is to find the truth. Subhanallah, this is the objectivity of the Quran. The Quran tells Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, entering into a debate with the Christians of Najran in the mosque, he's telling them, telling him what? Qul, in kana lil-Rahmani waladun fa'ana awalu al-Abideen. Say, if Ar-Rahman has a son, I'll be the first one to worship him. 
Yes, of course. If you really, if really Allah has a son, we should be the first people to worship him. And this proves that Islam is wrong. No. It proves that we are truth seekers. And Islam tells us, seek the truth, even if it's not on your side. Subhanallah. In Surah Al-Kahf, هؤلاء قوم اتخذوا من دونه آلهة لو لا يأتون عليهم بسلطان بين the youth who slept in the cave they say those are our people they took other gods besides Allah if they just have evidence which means the problem is they didn't have evidence if there is evidence yes of course but there is no evidence of course the issue is we should be truth seekers not trying to win debates win and our opinion should be always the right who said so do you admit when you are wrong do you find it easy to say well i was wrong when i did that when was the last time you said i was wrong <laughs> do you justify your wrong actions do you always tend to justify your wrong opinions and actions? Can you lie to, in order not to appear wrong? By the way, most lies are for, for that reason, by the way. Well, if something is broken, a kid says, not me, it's not me. Well, he's the one who broke it. Why? Because he doesn't want to look wrong. And this is because we didn't discipline him right. Because we punish him when he is wrong. You should, when you discipline your children, tell them that in this life, wrong things happen. It's okay. Just don't do it again and be more careful and learn from your wrong. When you do so and you stop punishing your kids, they will stop lying when they do wrong. But we scare them if they break something. So the first thing they do, they lie. And then those kids, they grow up like that. They become men who lie. At work, they lie. They don't want to appear wrong. Do you seek advice from others? Do you go to others and you ask for their advice? Amazing. These days, we are translating some episodes called Islamophobia that we will be filming. And the translator is sending me the, uh, the, her, her translation. And then when I consult her on something, I say, but do you think this is okay? Or should we change this phrase with that? She's thanking me. She said, I'm thank you. Th thank you for consulting me. Thank you for consulting you. Why do you think so? said, there are others who just change it without getting back to me? Well, if we seek the best result, we will consult more people and more people and more people. I don't care. If her opinion is right or mine, I just want the right one. I want the best and that's it. Why do we feel like we are in a competition with each other? We are not in a competition with each other. These are all spiritual weaknesses. Do you admit your shortcomings? Do you hide your shortcomings? Will you mention something in your past that wasn't very glorious? Like, for example, uh, you were born in a poor family, and then by time you became a big businessman. Do you mention to people that you were born from a very poor family? Or do you try to hide this, feeling like it's a stigma? These are all spiritual weaknesses. If you're not weak spiritually, you don't care. Let people know the truth. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing is wrong. But because we're weak spiritually, we tend to lie, and we tend to hide, and we tend to do these things. How do you feel when someone advises you? So you are somewhere, and someone is telling you, well, I advise you to do this, brother. Do you feel like there's fire inside? He thinks, I don't know. Or do you tell him, yeah, I know, I know. Thank you very much, I know that. What's the problem with someone telling you something that you know? Why do you need to, to show him that you know it? Why don't you just say, oh, thank you, yeah, okay. Even if you know it. Why do you want to show that you know everything? 
You know what? This happens also in Salah. When someone, when the Imam is reciting a, a surah that one of those who have spiritual weakness is memorizing, so he starts uh, saying it also with the Imam so that to show the people around him that he is memorizing this surah. SubhanAllah. Do you know how many memorizers of the Quran in the world? About 9 million. So what do you think if you're memorizing one surah, you're among how many millions? 1.65 million by the billion, by the way. What's that? Spiritual weaknesses. And he sits in the, uh, in the lesson in front of the speaker, and the speaker speaks, and he keeps like, yeah, oh yeah, 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 yani, which means that if you go, I can take your seat and do it myself. Spiritual weakness. He wants to show that he knows. He learned this before. Allah. So the issue is, many of us are like that. Many of us, if we, if you don't have this, you will have that. You know, uh, I remember a beautiful book that I read by Abida Al Azm. She is the granddaughter of Sheikh Ali Al Tantawi. Sheikh Ali Tantawi was a Syrian scholar, a great scholar of Islam, and she wrote a book. Called Hakada Rabbani Jaddi Ali Tantawi. This is how my grandfather Ali Tantawi disciplined me. She said, Grandpa used to bring us all, gather all the grandchildren around him, and he gets a, uh, some notes, some papers, and a pen, and he says, Come on, I want you to criticize me. Yalla. Every one of you should say, one or two or three shortcomings of grandpa. They say, what? Say, yeah, I want to know my shortcomings. Because like that, I'll be disciplining myself. Like that, I can be correcting myself. So she said, all of us grew up seeking advice from people, feeling okay when we are criticized, trying to find our shortcomings, because this is how he disciplined them. It's a very nice book. She said, one of the things is that he used to bring a big bar of chocolate and cut it into pieces. And one of the pieces won't be equal to be like the biggest piece. And he puts them all in a plate and he starts offering them the chocolate. Every one of them, when his hand goes to the biggest piece, he looks at him in the eye. So he's like, he's doing something wrong. He go. Which means you should give priority to others, not to yourself. If something is big, keep it. And she said, when we are eating something, when there is like 30, 40 pieces and we only like five children, and we're eating, we're eating, there's a piece which is called the sacred piece, which no one eats. It's the last piece. So whenever there is a last piece, no one takes it. Because he thinks that maybe someone else wants it. They call it also the sacred piece. So it's, it's how you discipline the children and discipline people by walking the talk. It's not lessons. These are not lessons. How do you feel when you are praised? You know what al-mateh is called? Praise is the wine of the spirit so when someone praises you you're high wow it feels good do you feel good when people praise you be frank with yourself do you feel proud of yourself you feel pleased when people praise you do you seek praise from people so, for example, if I finish this lesson and I tell people, hmm, what do you think about the lesson? What do you think I'm expecting? I'm expect of course, I'm not expecting people to tell me, no, ah, it was, uh, wow, thank you very much. Huh? So, I ask people because I want this wow. I want people to praise. This is a spiritual weakness. So, you see people doing something and then they come and ask, hmm, how was it? If you tell them, not very good. He keeps arguing. Excuse me, you ask that question. It's not good. That's it. Try to do it. With people who come and tell you, uh, how was that? that? That he did. Tell him, not very good. 
and see what will happen to him. He will, yeah, he will fight with you. Well, man, you asked a question. Give me the list of the answers that you want then. These are spiritual weaknesses. Wallahi, we all suffer from this. Praise. Praise is the most dangerous thing. Do you want people to praise you? You are trying to make people praise you. by right? Somehow. You go and say, brothers, we really need to do Qiyam. We have to do Qiyam. And I keep telling you about Qiyam, Qiyam, until you start thinking that I'm doing Qiyam. Because that's the intention. Maybe this is my intention. If this is really my intentions, ooh, can you imagine that people think of you something that you are not doing? This is so dangerous, so dangerous for Allah. The Prophet ﷺ said, it is kalabis yithaw bayzur. So someone is showing off with something that doesn't really exist. It's not even with something that he has. No, it is he is showing off with something that is not true. Do you love to be in leadership position? You always want to be the leader. This is a spiritual weakness, by the way. And the Prophet ﷺ spoke very highly about the servant of Allah, whom wherever he is given a task, he is doing it. If he is in the leadership, he's okay. In the back, okay. Among the people who just give drink to the fire soldiers, okay. He accepts. He accepts. And he's just doing his task perfectly. But he doesn't really always want to be in the, in the leadership. Be frank with yourself. Does it happen a lot that you think yourself the best in some things, the most fitting, the fittest? How about your duties about pe towards people? Do you congratulate uh, your colleagues when they get a raise or get promoted to a higher position than you? Most of us, yes, we congratulate them. Next question, from your heart. Are you really happy <laughs> for your colleague because he got promoted? The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه. None of you is a true believer until he wishes for his brother what he wishes for himself. Wow, none of you is a true believer. Your Iman is not perfected, not true Iman, until you wish for your brother what you wish for yourself, which means when he gets a raise or a promotion, you are really happy from your heart. Who among us is like that, brothers? I'm not talking to any people, I'm talking to the elite. I'm talking to the people who come to the mosque nearly five times a day. And we are still not like that, which means that we really need a lot. We really need to work on ourselves. Do you make dua for others to be successful? Your equals to be successful. By the way, this is your homework today. Yeah. Your homework, at the end, inshallah, I will tell you the homework. You will choose maybe the most competitor, the one who is really equal to you in work, at work, and you will make dua for him every day to be successful, and you will not tell him. Inside you, deep in your heart, you will make dua for him that Allah makes him successful. And I want next time when I say, who did it? Everybody raises his hand. I'm not asking you to buy goggles this time. Okay? The point is, when I said, the Prophet ﷺ said that none of you truly believes until he wishes for his brother, what he wishes for himself is that spiritual weakness goes inversely proportional with Iman. 
So the more you have spiritual weaknesses, the less your Iman is. So the, the stronger you are spiritually, when you stop showing off, when you start being becoming spiritually strong, and you don't care about these things, and you, you're really happy for people when th good things happen to them, this means that your Iman becomes stronger. Because when you are happy for one of your peers, when he gets promoted, it means that you have trust in Allah. That the rizq of Allah is not decreasing. That his promotion will not decrease anything from your money or from your rizq. This is what it means, actually. Do you remind people with your favors? So sometimes you do a favor for someone, and then after a few weeks or a few months, you remind him in the first dispute between you. A dispute happens, and you remind him that you did this and that for him. Some people do that. Some of us do that. Uh, does it hurt you when you don't hear thank you after doing a favor for someone? So you did someone some something, he took it and he left. He just left. Where's thank you? You want a thank you? Or do you want a reward from Allah? If you don't get a thank you, and you feel okay, um, I'm, I'm saving all my reward with Allah, then you will find piles of rewards, inshallah. But if you really want a thank you, you can get a thank you. And nothing then. Does it really hurt you? Do you remember your favors on people? Do you remember that this brother there, I helped him to get a job. And this brother there, I helped him to get married. And this brother there, I helped him to borrow some money on. This brother, I, I lent him some money. And this, so you remember your favors. You remember that you gave charity as that much last year. And you remember these things. By the way, one of the gifts of Allah is that Allah makes us forget the good deeds that we do. If you remember your good deeds, this is very, very dangerous for you spiritually. But some of us, tend to remember. They are about to record these things. Um, are you proud of your capabilities that you are, you can memorize easily, that you are a hafiz? You tell people, I'm hafiz, I'm hafiz, I'm hafiz. I am Maulana. I've, I have, because some, in some places when you go, they don't know you. So you say, I am Maulana, by the way. I'm Mufti, and I'm hafiz. Alhamdulillah, I'm humble. Yeah, very humble, mashallah. <laughs> and I fast Mondays and Thursdays. You know what? I know all the um, the the famous people. Yani, if you want the uh, mobile number of Sheikh this I have it. Yeah, if you want the mobile number of Sheikh uh, Qaradawi, I have it. If you want the, I know all those famous people are my. My friends, yeah. you want to feel distinguished, better than others in anything, even for by having some phone call, phone numbers. I am the first one to do this and that. I am the first one. I am the most who can do this. Why don't you say I do this? Why do you want to be the most, or the first one, or distinguished? It's uh, the most dangerous human desire. You know who did that? An example of that? Qarun. Qarun said, Inama utituhu ala ilmin indi. This wealth was given to me on an account of the knowledge I possess. Do you degrade others? Because you feel that the higher their status, the more you are threatened. So you don't want people to be to have a high status because this is a threat for you, for your status. So you start degrading others. Degrade, you know what? Some people even degrade their own employees. 
who work for them. They are not even competitors. And their success is your success. But still, because you have spiritual weakness, you feel competition from your own employee who works for you. So he starts even degrading his, his own employees. This is, yeah, this, this, this is something common that we see. He's your employee and he's successful. And someone tells him, well, you know what? This employee is very good. He feels bad when his employee is praised. He says, yeah, but still I do this and that all the time. But still he can do it all alone. But still I have to do... Uh, he feels threatened. So he downgrades people. Do you daydream? A lot of becoming rich, becoming famous, pointed at in the streets or something. Daydreams. Daydreams would mean that you have a lot of dunya in your heart. Someone would tell me, no, but I did daydream to do a lot of good deeds and go to Jannah. This is good. But who of us is daydreaming this? Maybe some of us, they dream to do good deeds and then be seen while doing it in order to be famous by doing good deeds. This is also more dangerous. So they dreams about dunya, about being rich, about being famous. This is also a sign of a spiritual weakness. Don't be frustrated. Inshallah, during this workshop, we will treat all this. There are treatments, by the way, but you have to do the homework. I can't ask people who did the homework and then I find two people. By the way, most of those who do the homework are those whom I cannot see now. You know who? The sisters. They communicate with me through emails. MashaAllah. The rate of doing the homework among sisters is nearly, nearly five to eight times more than the brothers. And maybe the number also is more. Um... And the best example of a spiritual weakness, you know who? Satan, Shaitan, Iblis. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him and told the creation, and he told the angels to prostrate down for Adam, he didn't. And Allah blamed him, saying, مَا مَنَعَكَ أَلَّا تَسْجُدَ لِمَا خَلَقْتُ بِيَدَيَّ إِذْ أَمَرْتُكُ why didn't you prostrate yourself to the one that I created with both my hands as I commanded you? Shaitan said, he wasn't Shaitan yet. He was Iblis. His name is Iblis. He became Shaitan. Shaitan is a job, by the way. He said, I am better than him. You created me from fire and you created him from clay. Spiritual weakness. Racism is a spiritual weakness by the way when someone thinks himself better than others distinguished than others because of his race color or sex is a spiritual weakness sahibul jannatain is another example the owner of the two gardens in surat al kahf is also an example وَكَانَ لَهُ ثَمَرٌ فَقَالَ لِصَاحِبِهِ وَهُوَ يُحَاوِرُهُ أَنَا أَكْثَرُ مِنْكَ مَالًا وَأَعَزُّ نَفَرًا And he had abundant fruit. And he said unto his companion, while having a discussion with him, I am much wealthier than you and mightier in men. Which means, I have more honor and power. I am more. I have more. And there are others. Through history, I mean, the books of history tells us about uh, one of the examples is Abdullah ibn Ziyad ibn Dadiyan Taymi. He is one of the leaders of the armies of the Amawis. Something happened in Al Basra and the people got scared. So he went and he gave a speech that calmed everyone down and comforted them. So people start to say, May Allah make a lot of people as good as you. He said, لَقَدْ كَلَّفْتُمُ اللَّهَ شَطَطًا You are asking Allah for a very difficult thing. 
Can you imagine this? You're asking Allah something difficult? Difficult for who? For Allah? To make more people like you? Subhanallah. <laughs> Ma'bad ibn Zurara. He is in the, in the, at the time of Jahiliyyah. But actually, he is also a father of one of the companions of the Prophet, Abu al-Qa'a ibn Ma'bad ibn Zurara. Uh, he said, well, uh, the father of this companion in the Jahiliyyah, of course, he was sitting one day and a woman came and she said, uh, Ya Abdullah, كيف الطريق إلى موضع كذا? Oh, servant of Allah. By the way, before the Prophet ﷺ, the Kuffar used to worship Allah as well, by the way. But they used to worship with Allah, also the idols. As also, uh, so that to, to have some intercession between them and Allah. But she told him, Oh, servant of Allah, Ya Abdullah, Oh, servant of Allah, how can I go to this and that place? He told her, someone like me, uh, you call him a servant of Allah? See the arrogance. Those people were gods, were considering themselves gods. They worship themselves. And many of us worship themselves. Worship the ego, worship an, an idol that we have built and grew up through the years. It is called I or me. We worship this I. Suffering from pride and arrogance. So Abu Shimal al Usdi, he lost his uh, camel. And it had all his belongings. So he was so angry and he said, If this camel is not back, I will not pray for Allah again. And people looked for the camel because they were afraid that this man would become a kafir like that. And then they found his camel. So, do you see? Allah knows that I mean it. <laughs> I'm telling you, spiritual weakness can make people really crazy. Thinking يعني, of Allah like tete tete. يعني, so, I will end with the hadith of Prophet Muhammad that says, إياكم والتمادح فإنه الذبح إن كان أحدكم مادحا أخاه لا محالة فليقل, فليقل أحسب ولا أزكي على الله أحدا رواه ابن ماجه The Prophet peace be upon him said, don't you ever praise each other. It is like slaying one another. If, you, if one of you really have to praise his brother, then let him say, I think. And only Allah knows better. And don't be absolute. So you say, I think this brother is good. I think this brother is good in doing so and so. And Allah knows better. But don't say, yes, I'm sure he's the best one to do this. Don't praise each other. Like that. Now let's go for the homework. All of you except the two brothers have to do that again. You have to do it. Those who didn't do it, you have to wear the goggles. Bring the goggles. Any old goggles. We're not going to swim. And you just use the uh, electricity tape. This electricity tape. Okay. And you wrap it like that until no light at all can enter. You're totally blind when you wear it like that. Half an hour every day. And again, same disclaimer. East London Mosque and Father Solomon and Bridges Foundation and Meadows of Paradise are not responsible for any accidents. <laughs> okay? But you have to blind yourself half an hour every day and see how important this is that you never think about your vision sense. You never thank Allah about it for. The homework of today's, uh, uh, of uh, this week, is designate one or two or three of your equals, people who are equal to you, or competitors who compete with you in the same يعني, uh, company, if you are salesmen, other salesmen, and make dua for them secretly. And don't tell them that you're making dua for them. In your heart, you make dua for them every day. At least two or two, three times every day that Allah makes them successful in their work. 
in the field which, which, where they compete with you. Alas, you understand, brothers? I'm not telling you to go and buy something. Now this is easy to do. It's, it's, it's easy physically, but I, I will show you, and you will see, it's not easy. It's not easy to do it spiritually. That you make dua for your own equals. That Allah makes them successful in the same field. Don't ask Allah to make them more successful than you. But just to be successful. To be successful. This is how we will treat our ailments, brothers. Like that, we finish today's... Uh, Today's session, and if anyone has any questions, I would welcome the questions. Brother. No, no. Praising someone is al madh to speak highly uh, of him. But thank, thank one, thanking someone, that's what the Prophet said, that the one who doesn't thank people, he's not thanking Allah. So when you do a, a favor, I say, thank you for doing this. But thanking is something different from being you know what? You're the one. You're someone that I don't know what would and the world look like without you. This is praising. Okay? Yes, yeah. It's so okay. Excellent. When one gets praised, how can this individual prevent, prevent their spiritual weakness from jumping into his heart? Coming in the next sessions, we will deal with it. Today, we will only... Uh, trying to list down the symptoms of spiritual weakness. In the next sessions, inshallah, you will learn how to do that. There are ways. Abu Khattab did it once. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, of course, that's very bad. That's so bad, by the way. Of course, uh, we were raised that when you do something for someone and he doesn't say thank you, this is rude, and it's an, it's you get offended. Is that bad? Yes, this is bad, by the way. You do something for him or for Allah. If it's totally for Allah, you should be very happy that he did not say thank you. When when you start. Uh, Strengthening the relationship with Allah, you will only focus on the relationship with Allah, not people. When you say salamu alaikum to people and they ignore you and they don't respond to your salam, do you know who is who is responding saying wa alaikum as salam for you? Do you know who? The angels. If you really believe it, when you say salamu alaikum to people and they ignore you, if you really believe it, you should be happy. If you really believe it deep inside. But if you get offended, then you don't really believe. No, it's okay. When someone asks you for a favor, please make dua for me. Say, okay, I'll make dua for you. Please, I'll do that. It's okay, yeah. Of course, of course. Yeah, make dua for people and tell people that you make dua for them, except the people that I told you about this homework. In this, this homework is especially to treat some ailments, but this, this shouldn't be the norm later on. It will not be the norm. I will ask you to do also during this workshop some strange homeworks. For example, and it will, yani, I will ask you in the next week maybe to uh, fast one day during the week, secretly. And if anyone learns that you're fasting, even 15 minutes or 5 minutes before Maghrib, you will take a glass of water and you will drink it. Why? To learn next time to keep it secret. This is not the norm. This is something in this training we do the extreme sometimes to treat some ailments. And this is, uh, it, it, it says, and we say, إِنَّمَا الْعِلْمُ بِالتَّعَلُّمْ وَإِنَّمَا الْحِلْمُ بِالتَّحَلُّمْ Which means that يعني, what we're trying to do is to find out our shortcomings and to treat them. How do you treat your shortcomings? First of all, how do you know your shortcomings from two people? Your friends 
and your enemies. So if an enemy or someone who hates you tells you, you're a coward, don't get angry, don't get offended. If you're someone who is really looking for your shortcomings, you should think, why did he say so? Maybe I'm a coward. And start thinking, am I really a coward? If, if I'm not, may Allah forgive him. But if I am really a coward, well, thank him for telling you your, 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 your shortcomings. Don't get offended except for the religion of Allah, but not personal. Not, not personal. And then what do you do? If you're coward, if you get scared easily, you treat this by exaggerating in doing brave things. For example, someone tells you, you're bakhil, you are, one of the ways is through your friends. The Prophet ﷺ said, المؤمن مرآت أخي. A, a brother is the mirror of his own brother. What do you see in the mirror? No, not yourself. If you want to see yourself, keep a photograph with you and look at yourself. In the mirror, you see your shortcomings. And then you start fixing them. After all the shortcomings that can be fixed are fixed, and only the shortcomings that cannot be fixed remain, you go. So your brother should give you your shortcomings, should advise you. That's why what it means. Your brother tells you, he advises you. And then you take these shortcomings and you start working on yourself. So if your brother tells you, listen, wallahi, you're, you're nice, but there's one thing that I want to tell you. Yes, sometimes, brother, you are like too stingy. Don't get offended. Yeah, maybe I'm stingy. What do you do to treat this? Exaggerate in spending. So what we are doing here in treatment is we are exaggerating in something. But this will not be the norm later on. But just to treat yourself. There was one here, yes. Now, husband and wife is called compliments. And this is okay. And the Prophet ﷺ even allowed it. It's actually a lie. I said last time, when you tell your wife, I love your cooking. Even though when she turns away, you just throw it quickly in the bin or something. Still, it's okay because you're pleasing her. Or if she tells you, you know what? When you wear this tie, you look like Tom Cruise. She's probably lying also. Tom Cruise is someone who looks handsome yet. Yeah. Anyway, so, but this, these are common. This is something else. Yeah. This is something else. It's, it's allowed. Yes. When someone what? When someone is dead, yes, of course, خلاص, he is uh, safe from being spiritually weak. But actually, you mentioned the good things about him, and that's what the Prophet Sallallahu said. اذكروا محاسن موتاكم. Mention the good deeds that, your, that, that the deceased did. Yes, of course. Uh, you wanted something? Hard. Okay, hard. Yes. Excellent. Well, this is something else. For example, your child, how do you encourage children without praising them? For example, if your child uh, drew a nice painting, you don't tell him, wow, you became a good painter. You're the best painter. No, no, say, wow, your painting has become better than before. I want you then to try to find the best colors for your painting. So actually, he is happy with what you're saying, and you're not growing the ego inside. Okay? So don't praise, encourage. Tell him, oh, this became much better than before. Your swimming is much better than before. I want you to keep on and to become much better and much better every day. This is encouragement. Don't say, you'll be the best swimmer. You are now the best swimmer. You are now a real, you are the one. You, this is not good. This is not good. Okay, and they keep doing this to the children, and then the children start to get in touch with others and find that they are not the best. They're not the strongest. They're not the most beautiful. They can't become frustrated every day. And they come back from school sad. And we don't know why the children are sad. It's because before school, you were doing this to them. Yes. Somebody.
Uh, okay. The list of questions that I ask, do we keep asking them every single day of everything? No, Akhi, you will be conscious. And you will have it deep inside of you that when you do something uh, like that, you will feel like you did something wrong. And I need to wake myself up. So it would be, and you would be more alert. You'd be more, more awake. That's it. That's, that's not like something that you ask yourself every day. No, it's all. But it will be something deep inside of you. After the, the six sessions, if you do the homework, yeah, if you do the homework, you will be more alert to these things. Yes. Well, this is also a special situation when you see someone who is very sad and depressed and he is totally lacking confidence. Maybe you need to praise him a little bit in order to give him some self-confidence. Well, okay, you, you, you can still do that with the, with a limit, but also talks to him, talk to him about Allah and what Allah can do to him. For example, I'll tell him, no, 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 believe me, with the grace of Allah, you can do a lot. So always mention Allah, and this is something coming, inshallah, in the next sessions that you need also, because actually some of us are really good in doing things. Some of us do things very well. How can they يعني, 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 uh, save themselves and guard themselves from being arrogant? It's by mentioning Allah a lot. Say always, by the grace of Allah, I did that. By the grace of Allah, he made me do that. Yes, of course, even at, at the same also and during sports, you, you, you say by the grace of Allah, you did a good this race, alhamdulillah. Of course, of course, no, no problem. Uh, there was someone here. Yes. Yes. Yes, of course. Of course, it's okay to make dua to an non-Muslim that he, is, he becomes successful in this life, by the way. The only thing is you can't make dua for a non-Muslim after he dies that he goes to heaven. Why? Because Allah said so in the Quran. That's it. And Allah did not allow the Prophet. This happened when the Prophet وسلم, made dua for his uncle. And the ayah descended on the Prophet that Allah is not allowing you or the companions to make dua even to their own kins if they die, knowing that خلاص, they are among the people of hellfire. That's it. Because أخي, we're talking about someone who was given warning and he was told about Allah that he should uh, worship Allah and realize that Allah is one and he is there is a God, there is a creator. And still he was arrogant against this and he did not uh, uh, embrace the religion of Allah. So now he is between the hands of Allah. Someone who was arrogant against Allah and you're asking Allah to uh, yani embrace him with mercy? So actually, this would be offending, offensive for Allah. Offensive. Now he's in Allah's hands. Khalas, you, you don't. That's it. But it's okay to make dua for non-Muslims during their life with guidance or with anything good in life. No problem. Okay. Anything else? Yep. No, when you say someone radiallahu anhu, it means may Allah be pleased with him. Radiallahu radiya is a past tense. It means Allah is pleased with him. But uh, idiomatically, in the Arabic language, we say something like in the past with the, with the intention of giving, making dua. So when I say rahimahullah, it doesn't necessarily mean that Allah already showered him with mercy. It means that I am making dua that Allah makes mercy. This is, this is uh, linguistic. In the Arabic language, it's okay to say radiallahu anhu. Which, which doesn't mean that Allah really is pleased with him. It means that you are making dua that Allah gets pleased with him. Yes. No, there is no email this time. I, the email was last time in the last session because I wanted to see the 60 minutes of the Dabur Quran and how are you doing with it because it's, it's very important. This time it differs. No, you don't, there's no email this time. But if you have a question, you can send an email to my uh, email which is info at bridges-foundation.org. Bridges Foundation. Put a hyphen between them 
and .org, not .com, because we are an organization. And info, to get information, info at bridges-foundation.org. Huh. Who else? Yep. Yeah. With the intention, when you say Al-Marhum, with the intention that you are making dua for him is okay, but the intention thinking that Allah already did that and he, 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 he is showering him with mercy, this is not allowed, of course. Jazakum Allah khairan, barakallahu feekum, see you next week, please do your homework. Inshallah, all of us inshallah. Wallahi, if you need to change yourself, you need to have the will. Allah will not change the status of people until they change their own status. Assalamu alaikum, jazakum Allah khairan.